Good afternoon, Namaskar. I, Kriti Vadhera, would like to welcome all the teachers, learners, educators, students to CIT and CRT's live phone in program. And you are watching us live on PME with their channel number 10. This session will be a social science session for standard 10 students and uh, we'll be discussing a follow up. Uh, topic green revolution will be discussed today here and the expert who has joined us i would like to introduce professor mv srinivasan from department of education and social sciences thank we you. welcome you to be e with there and uh, if you have any queries any suggestions then please do let us know you can dial on our toll free numbers numbers would be 18001121265 and the second number is 18001129 to watch the live streaming of this program, kindly log into our official YouTube channel NCRT official and there in the live chat box you can send all your questions, queries and suggestions. Certainly we will be taking up all of them in the last segment of this program. There is one more medium through which you can contact us. You can mail your suggestions and questions on dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So let's begin with the today's uh, live interaction program on Green Revolution. I welcome you again, Professor Srinivasan. Thank you. Uh, this uh, wonderful topic is such vast, uh, uh, like um, I want you to give our viewers just a quick review on what all we discussed last time. Yeah. Thank you, Kirti, and um, welcome viewers. And I'm sure that you'll be taking care of um, your health and following social distance um, due to COVID-19. Um, uh, in which we are living today. You may recall that in the previous session, we discussed um, how grill revolution uh, impacted our lives. You may remember that we, I raised some seven questions. Uh, what is green revolution? Where green revolution was implemented? What are the instruments used for implementing green revolution? What are the impacts? You also remember that one um, eminent farmer, uh, Bharat Bhushan Tyagi, was awarded Bhatma Vibhushan um, that you also saw the video where he was describing how in his uh, farmland in Uttar Pradesh uh, using organic farming and cultivating and doing wonders in his, uh, on his farm actually. We also saw the um, uh, role of the legendary uh, the founder of the Green Revolution, M.S. Swaminathan, how he grew as a, a simple graduate student to the, um, a person who has brought in self-sustenance, um, self-reliant India in terms of producing food grains for the country. So we also saw how he was awarded by the one, one uh, 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 media channel, NDTV. He was one of the um, 25 legendary figures in India. So we also discussed about what are the issues the farmers were facing. I also, um, you can also remember that I, I told you that uh, the farmers protest that is happening in the, on the borders of uh, Delhi today is also because of the Green Revolution and its impact. Okay, so today we are going to discuss a little further that uh, uh, if you look at the topic of today's session is that how we can understand green revolution from interdisciplinary perspective and how you can understand this from pluralist, pluralist perspective. More than this means you can have a different viewpoints. You remember that you are in, in your social science classrooms, you will have a, a different debates actually. So two people may not have a single opinion, you may have different opinions actually. So, uh, what does it mean for in the area of green revolution? How to understand green revolution? Is it a, there is only one view about it? Uh, what are the contrasting views that are prevailing in India? That we are going to discuss a uh, little further. Actually. Okay, Professor Srinivasan, uh, from last uh, session itself, uh, if I uh, take questions, because there were so many questions we got, and you just discussed about the wonderful video which we have shown uh, in the last program uh, about organic farming. So there were various questions about organic farming and green revolution. I would like you to address our viewers uh, about uh, what is basically organic farming and how it is different from green revolution. It's a very good question. Um, I think uh, whoever has asked this question, and. Um, Organic farming is relatively a new idea that is emerging in the literature of Indian agriculture and in a modern sense. That's why it is called organic farming. But if you remember, if you go back to history, organic farming is a situation where farmers use um, non-chemical organic materials, manures on their fields. Okay, that's the major difference between the current farming practices in India and uh, the difference between organic farming. You remember that if you watch the video of um, uh, Bharat Bhushan Tyagi, 
in, on his farms, he, he does not use any chemical fertilizers. If you are a, a student, if you are living in the rural area or if you are in the urban area, try to visit a farm. You will find that what kind of chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers farmers are using so that the, the, uh, they are able to um, increase their production actually. So the organic farming is a situation where the farmers use natural uh, fertilizers, for example, cow dung or um, all the, the manures uh, produced from um, uh, leaves. Okay, so there are variety of ways uh, organic farming takes place in India. Depending on the uh, geography, depending on the availability of resources, the farmers, depending on their soil types, they use different types of farming methods. But the major criteria is that we should not use chemicals, fertilizers. So if that is the case, that is not uh, organic farming. Okay. So uh, that's how the organic farming today is emerging as a major um, uh, cropping practices all over India. And if you look at the um, way the, the production activity, if you look at the production, productivity levels, organic farming also leading to um, higher levels of productivity. And uh, if you are able to talk to a farmer who is practicing this organic farming, uh, that will be, you, they will, you will hear a lot of news, lot interesting uh, facts about Indian agriculture. And how is it different from Green Revolution if our 10 st uh, students Yeah, so Green to. Revolution is a situation where you need to is use fertilizers, pesticides to the possible extent and you also you have to use um, mechanized agriculture. For example, you use a lot of modern uh, equipments, uh, tractors and all threshers and so on. And uh, you also have to use, uh, uh, you need to have a regular uh, water supply for your farms, okay. So the major difference between the green revolution and the organic farming is that in the green revolution and organic farming, there are similarities. For example, there is nothing wrong if you are using a mechanized agriculture. If you are using a tractor, there is nothing uh, wrong in the organic farming. But the thing is that in case of chemical fertilizers, so the application of the chemicals, that differentiate between the green revolution and organic farming. Right. Uh, Professor Srinivasan, uh, through these mediums of asking questions, uh, we get to know about the curiosity of our students. And there is one uh, very wonderful question which our, one of our viewer, Nikunj Tyagi, has sent us. Uh, she wants to understand uh, whether Green Revolution and Chipko movement, do they have any connection? Uh, exactly. That's a very, very uh, pertinent question in today's context. Actually. Yeah. If you look at the Green Revolution, See, why organic farming coming into effect? It's also because preservation of the natural resources that we have in India. We have all the natural resources, land, so, like soil, and the, the um, uh, natural resources like the forest and so on. Okay, so all these natural resources, like resources we need to conserve. So the Chipko movement is a movement that was widely spread in 1970s and 1980s where um, one of the founders of the uh, Chipko movement, Sundarlal Bahuguna, he spread all over the Himalayan regions. If you look at the, if you, if you go through the, some of the like, literature in the area of Chipko movement, you will find that that was the movement meant for preservation of natural resources, particularly the for, like, forest resources. And though in those days, for example, if you recall 1970s, uh, forest, particularly in the Himalayan regions, was used for like for industrial purposes. So uh, uh, the forest area, the people used to um, uh, plant trees and then cut those trees, and then uh, because of which the uh, soil was degraded, a lot of um, um, the quality has come down. There is a lot of degradation of the soil, and the um, um, the entire the Himalayan region affected because of the uh, cutting of trees actually. So the the team, the, the volunteer organizations in the Himalayan region with the leadership of the Sundarlal Vahuna mobilized <coughs> and they, the, the, the term Chipko means hug. So all the women of those villages, almost like hundreds of villages, all those women, they went, they hugged the trees so that the, the, those who come to cut the trees, they were, they were, um, uh, they were uh, stopped from cutting the trees. So, so Chipko movement is about the preservation of the forest as a natural resource. Okay, how this is different green revolution? Green revolution is a movement which is happening in the plain agriculture, plain land area. And um, uh, yes, green revolution is leading to a lot of other challenges and it's also reducing the soil quality. Okay, so Chipko movement was trying to preserve the soil quality, whereas green revolution is trying to um, um, 
as one set of scholars saying that it is trying to reduce the groundwater level, it is trying to, we are going to see the impact um, in a couple of minutes. So I would say that the Chipko movement and the Green Revolution are cl closely related to each other because all of them are dealing with the way we use natural resources in the country. Okay. So uh, I also wanted to say that today's session, like uh, I was talking about um, uh, interdisciplinary research, like interdisciplinary, how to understand Green Revolution from the interdisciplinary perspective. Look at the screen. There is a, you can recall that this data I also presented in the previous session uh, that uh, India has been able to achieve self-reliance in pro protection of food grains. So if you look at the uh, table, here you, uh, you can see that within the span of 40 years, our rice production has increased from 35 million tons to 106 million tons. So like that you can see the entire food grains production also from 80 million tons to we have almost like um, uh, three to four times increase in the production of food grains. So this is what has happened in Green Revolution and uh, it is increasingly, if you look at the last 10 years, there is a slow increase in the production of food grains in the country. So this is one of the uh, major achievement of Green Revolution. We are able to achieve self-sustenance. This means we are able to produce uh, for feeding to our own people. We no longer require to import from other countries. Rather, some of the food grains are also exported to other countries. Okay, so how to understand green revolution? Is it the all green revolution? Look at the screen. Green revolution is connected to, uh, you may be studying different subject areas, you are in class 9th and 10th or in any classes. Green revolution is clo closely related to many subject areas. It is not only a subject dealing with the social science area. How it is related to uh, different subject areas? The first, let, let me look at the uh, topic history. How uh, Green Revolution is connected to history? If you look at the way, uh, why Green Revolution was implemented, what was the nature of agriculture in, uh, like in India? So historically, we uh, introduced Green Revolution techniques, all the methodologies of uh, new way of uh, farming in, in India because of the famines that we faced, because of the food shortage that we faced, uh, not only uh, before independence, even after independence also, we were not able to produce and we were, uh, we were just compelled to import from other countries. Okay, so the history tells us what, what kind of agriculture practices that we followed. So if you want to understand about Green Revolution, we also have to see what is the situation before 1960s and what is the situation after 1990s. So history is an important source for understanding Green Revolution. You have to uh, learn about history of agriculture practices in India. Then Green Revolution is also closely related to biology and plant genetics. You must have seen when you are seeing the video of um, uh, Professor um, uh, Swaminathan, how he started his life as a um, breeder, plant breeder and he got like that department is now called genetics department. So the, it is, uh, the Green Revolution is closely without biology, there is no Green Revolution. So you need to understand about uh, like all the components of, if you want to understand about Green Revolution, go to the biology textbooks, you can see all the names of the plants, what are the plants that were cultivated and uh, what are their names actually, eh? how they have changed, what are the name of the um, high yielding crop, high, high yielding varieties and so on. So biology is also a major source of understanding about Green Revolution. And then the chemistry, how the chemistry is connected to Green Revolution. All the chemical reactions taking place on the field is nothing but chemistry only. So if you look at the, the, uh, the use of fertilizers, pesticides, all the chemicals that are used on the fields, whether they are organic fertilizer or inorganic fertilizers, natural manures, they are all part of the chemistry area. So you will find green revolution is one area where it, it gives you a lot of opportunity to learn about the way chemistry works, the way the subject is introduced. Then the political science. So the green revolution was a, a method of agriculture introduced in India by the political willingness. You maybe remember if you recall the video what uh, uh, M.S. Swaminathan was saying about, it is the political willingness that has led to the erstwhile government to introduce Green Revolution in India. The government has to pump in money and then, uh, then only farmers will be able to procure food grain uh, seeds, farmers will be able to get the fertilizers at a low price, farmers will be able to get the irrigation. For example, the government has to invest on uh, building dams 60s and 70s, there are many dams were built by um, erstwhile government. Okay, that had, so the political willingness and the political development, for example, the, uh, the political sciences also includes awareness program. How you can, um, you must have watched the video of Haryana farmers, how the, uh, the scientists and the government goes to the farmer and convince, talk to the farmers 
and uh, convince the farmers to cultivate, to experiment with the new crops actually. So right. that's a major uh, political science area where people are, uh, the government is campaigning, the scientists are campaigning. So that is also the political science area where the government and the political willingness that is also dealing with, like you can understand about green revolution if you venture into the political uh, dimensions of green revolution. And then the sociology. See, the green revolution has led to migration of people from different regions. For example, let me take example of Punjab and Bihar. The, the, uh, the mass uh, production of uh, paddy and wheat in Punjab has led to uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, migrants from Bihar to Punjab. Okay? And same way, uh, many uh, people also be moved from there to Western Uttar Pradesh. Okay, so the, the um, and when the people migrate from one region to other region, the entire life, the social life gets changed. So uh, the sociology gives a lot of opportunity to understand. If you look, want to see more about families, visit a family, uh, a farming family and ask them, their grandfathers and fathers and the present generation, what has happened in the last say about 70, 80 years. They will tell you about the sociological dimensions of green revolution, how their family uh, adopted to the new lifestyles, new farming strategies. And it's also to do with the geography. See, the, the geography means when we talk about water, the groundwater, availability of groundwater, the expansion of the irrigation facilities, and the, the quality of soil, the understanding about soil. So all these areas are also closely, like you can understand, if you once you study in the green revolution as an area, you will find the geography also plays a very crucial role. So see, the green revolution is an area where you get all the opportunity to understand from the interdisciplinary perspective, more than one discipline through which, so merely studying an economics textbook or merely studying a geography textbook, you may not be able to, you may be finding it difficult to understand the, the way green revolution implemented, operated functions in India. So you have to go for uh, different disciplines. Then, okay, you may be asking other question that uh, what is the source? What are the source from where I can get the details about green revolution? So I would strongly suggest you that today you are living in the, um, uh, Today you are living in the modern world and then you have internet and uh, you can just go to the uh, uh, YouTube and try to uh, download videos and see videos on the area of green revolution. So you can see a wonderful videos. In fact, for my own presentation today with you, many I have watched 10, 15 videos and the previous presentation also I watched about 10, 15 videos and chose some of them so that I can present to you. Right. So videos are the major source. And then secondly, reports. Over the years, government has appointed many committees how to implement green revolution and, and how to review. There are evaluation studies conducted. For example, recently in 2006, under the leadership of uh, Swaminathan, uh, National Commission on Farmers, a committee was, uh, he, he came out with the committee uh, report. So this kind of, uh, this is one example of committees. So if you are able to access the committee reports, they tell you about what is the situation before the green revolution was implemented? What is the situation prevailing now? What are the solutions that can be offered? Because of these committees only, all the things that are happening in our surroundings. For example, if you look at the, the way three uh, farm laws were implemented in India, it is because of the reports of many committees that were established, that were set up by the government over the years. So, so many committees, they recommend and the, the political um, parties and the governments that come to power, they implement what is feasible, what is viable in, in their own perspective actually. So that is the reports. And th secondly, please go to the shops. And if you are, um, uh, if you are, if you are lucky enough to live nearby a mandi, please, please visit a mandi, talk to farmers and traders. And then if you are, um, that's the other source, you can, you can talk to them how the prices are fixed. Uh, you can also visit a uh, shop which is selling fertilizers, pesticides, what are the varieties of uh, agricultural equipments available. And then please visit also a mandi, a grain market, it may be a vegetable shop also. You can ask them what are the crops, what are the things that are coming, what are the seasons. Different seasons you will get different vegetables. So you also can uh, get an idea about how the green revolution is leading to not only production of paddy and wheat, there are many more crops that are coming up today. So you can get an idea about what are the crops newly cultivated as part of the, uh, the second and many phases of green revolution. Then finally, uh, if you are able to visit, uh, um, not finally, bank, you ask the banks how the farmers, they bank, farmers borrow loan from many sources. So you also have to talk about, like understand about how the banks play a crucial role in the life of the farmers. They borrow, you must be seeing in the newspaper about waivers, uh, loan, uh, loan waiving strategies of many political parties in different states at, at the national level also. Visit the bank, talk to the bank manager and employees how farmers come, what kind of loans they take, for what purposes. Finally, if you are um, uh, 
really seriously trying to understand um, uh, green revolution, visit a farm, talk to the farmers and ask them what kind of farming practices they, they practiced 50 years before or 40 years before, what is, uh, what is the kind of practices they are following today. So you can see the differences. These differences are nothing but the implementation of green revolution. So these are the important sources through which you can understand green revolution and the way it is implemented in India. And then uh, finally, I will come to the last issue about uh, plural perspective. For example, uh, there is no one uh, argument with regard to green revolution. There are some scholars, economists, let me take one example of uh, three farm laws that are being implemented by the Indian parliament today because of which the farmers are protesting on the borders of Delhi. So, uh, if you read the scholars' viewpoints, economists and policymakers' viewpoint, there is no one opinion. It is not that everybody is supporting the um, farm laws. There are some scholars who are saying that the farm laws are not in the interest of the farmers. And there are some scholars who are saying that no, no, this is going to benefit farmers in the long run. Today it may be uh, very contentious. Okay. So, the two viewpoints are coming up. How to understand these two viewpoints? And maybe, maybe when you are going to undergraduate level, when you read more and more literature on this subject, you will learn more about it. But I would say that if you want to understand two view, like different viewpoints, ask these four questions yourself. How to produce? Should we use a lot of fertilizers or less fertilizers? Some people say yes, you may have to use more fertilizers. Some people say no, it is not, we should not do it. We have to protect the natural resource. And then what to produce? Should we produce wheat and paddy only? Should we produce many crops? Should you produce once in a year only? Should you produce more than one times in a year? So, what to produce is also a major issue. Uh, there is no one opinion on that. And then, how much to produce? If you look, uh, like how much to produce means how frequently you can produce. For example, you can produce uh, in these days, uh, we like paddy three times a year or okay. two times a year or once in a year also. Yeah. So, there are also different viewpoints are coming up actually. And then finally, where to produce? For example, the traditionally, Punjab was not a... Uh, paddy growing area but today it is paddy it's grow, it is becoming a paddy growing area if you look at madhya pradesh you will see the uh, um, lot of uh, pulses are produced but 30 years before madhya pradesh was, was not producing pulses so the produce the, the way the crops are also moving from different states that is also a major contentious issue in india in india today so uh, the scholars are not having single opinion right. so if you are going to higher classes you can read more literature and then you right. can f uh, form your own viewpoint on the impact of green revolution indeed they can and uh, professor shrinivasan in i guess uh, all these resources uh, you have uh, mentioned these are the best ways to figure out uh, what green revolution is and how it is impacting our life somehow so our students can figure out uh, what all we have discussed in all the aspects you have sh uh, shown them. So I guess uh, it was indeed a valuable session for all of us to know Green Revolution in a better aspect. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. It Thank was you. wonderful to have you. Thank you. And viewers remain connected to watch NCRT's resource material on PM Evidya. Thank you. Namaskar.